as many as 50 types of shorebird, or wader, occur in Britain each year. That's around an eighth of all the bird species recorded. However, most of us don't see waders very frequently, and when we do, they're often distant, so it's no wonder they can be bewildering to identify. We'll tackle the question of where to start with wader ID in another video. Here, we'll look at a species that regularly causes identification issues, roth. Only a few pairs of roth breed in the UK, but large numbers pass through, particularly in autumn, and there's a small but regular wintering population of around 800 birds. This means that whilst it's unusual to encounter males in their distinctive breeding finery, which they only retain for a few weeks, unruffed birds can be seen in any month. Although ruffs favour freshwater habitats, they will sometimes use estuaries and other saline habitats too. They're regularly seen at inland wetlands, including small or temporary pools. Ruff are medium-sized waders, with medium-length legs and bill. They show striking size and plumage differences between males and females, adults and juveniles. All these middling, and rather muddling, features make this a species where the overall impression is the most reliable starting point for identification. Look for a somewhat ill-proportioned wader, with a comparatively small head and shortish bill for the size of the body. This is particularly noticeable on the larger males. There is one consistent plumage feature to look out for on any individual that opens its wings or flies, conspicuous white ovals on either side of the tail. Ruff also have narrow white wing bars, though this is shared with several other medium-sized waders, including golden plover and knot. Take every opportunity to study Ruff alongside other waders. Compared to Redshank, Ruff is larger bodied and smaller headed, with a shorter bill. The bill is slightly down curved, which not only differs from red shank, but also all the other shanks and tringer sandpipers, including wood sandpiper. Adult females and adult males outside the breeding season tend to have mid brown upper parts and rather plain white bellies, with a variable amount of brown grey coloration across the upper chest. Birds in these plumages often have a white muzzle, where the bill meets the face. When present, this feature is distinctive. Adults usually have orange-yellow legs, not quite as red as an adult red shanks, and often have orange base bills. Juvenile ruffs appear in late summer and early autumn, particularly in August and September, and they show some quite different plumage characteristics from adults. They usually have all dark bills and greenish-yellow legs. Like the young of many waders, the feathers of the upper parts are pale fringed, creating a neat scaly or scalloped impression. These fringes usually start off warm buff orange in colour, though they become paler as the autumn wears on, and are eventually replaced. Perhaps even more obvious is the strong buff tinge across the underparts, often most intense on the chest. This can prompt confusion with other wader species, including a rare North American visitor, buff-breasted sandpiper. However, that species is daintier, with longer wings that makes the bird's rear look more tapered, as the primary feathers project beyond the other wing feathers. Their bills are shorter, finer and straighter, and the legs are a little shorter too. Buff-breasted sandpipers have unmarked buff faces and diffuse white eye rings, which makes their dark eyes stand out prominently against such a plain face. They also typically adopt a more horizontal stance than rough. Buff-breasted sandpipers have a strong preference for drier habitats such as short grassland and are far less likely to be seen wading than rough. Pectoral sandpiper is another scarce wader for which small juvenile ruffs can be mistaken. Like the previous species, this sandpiper has long primaries that stick out beyond the other wing feathers at rest. As their name suggests, the area of buff coloration across the chest is sharply cut off from the white underparts, unlike ruff, and this is further enhanced by neat streaking as far down at the chest as the cutoff line. Pectoral sandpipers usually have a fairly prominent pale supercilium, the line above the eye, and darker cap, making the head and face stripier than rough. In juvenile plumage, two other more commonly seen waders share the buff underparts of young ruff. These are knot and curly sandpiper. 
Not is a rather squat wader with relatively short legs. The upper parts are much greyer than juvenile ruff. Like pectoral sandpiper, both knot and curlew sandpiper usually have a prominent supercilium, creating a more stripy face pattern. Although juvenile curlew sandpipers have browner upper parts, more like ruff, they differ in several ways. They have proportionally longer bills, with a more obvious downward curve, and longish black legs. In flight, curlew sandpipers have a prominent all-white rump, rather than the two distinctive ovals of ruff. Unlike many other waders, ruff are largely silent away from the breeding grounds, even in flight, so if a wader you think might be a ruff flies off calling, it's almost certainly another species. <laughs> 